naked shamanism. Welcome to With Insights Radio. I'm your host, Iggy Garcia. I will take you on a journey across the universe through shamanism, metaphysical, and holistic. So sit back and relax and enjoy the show. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Let me know, folks, if you can hear me. As the intro is going on and over there on Blog Talk Radio. Well, Blog Talk had a little bit of a difficulty, so I apologize to all of you who were patiently waiting. And those of you who had to go to bed, I totally understand. It's no problem. <clears throat> well, we're cruising right along uh, 2018, and uh, this January seems awfully long for me. It just seems like a long, like it's been forever. It's like a Groundhog Day type of um, month. I don't know if you guys feel that way. Do you guys feel that way sometimes? Like it just seems like it lingers on and just doesn't kind of end. January just seems like the longest, especially especially when it's like so cold, especially those of you who live here in the Midwest and, you know, up, up these border towns of Canada and uh, wind coming in. So I want to say hi to Connie, Misty, and to Andrew and Juanita, everybody who's joined in here. And I know people pop in and in, just checking it out. And um, that's okay. This is uh, pre- it's going to be recorded, so you can go back to it later. And Abby, good to see you, my friend. How are you? Good to see you. Uh, I've been busy, guys. I, I did a show in the early part of January. <clears throat> Haven't been able to do one until just recently because it's just, just been crazy around here. But anyways, I'm just trying to get back on track and get back in the flow with things um i got my my tea ready here with my octopus cup mug uh tastes good and um that's that that's the, called positive energy it's uh, made by uh, the yogi teas and they always have these little these little um these little quotes so i'm gonna read this little quote to you may they they be the day to lead us to peace, to happiness, and to joy. That's what's on this, on this little tea quote, yogi teas. And I'm not sure if any of you guys drink the yogi teas. And I'm not trying to promote yogi teas. I just thought I'd just share that because every every day I try to at least, you know, make a little bit of a little picture of my mug and share that with somebody because it might just spark somebody to do something it might just inspire somebody to say hey you know today's a good day and you know and uh, i'm glad my friend iggy shared that with me because i kind of needed that i know sometimes i get those little things that pop in from time to time someone will say something or whatever and want to share their little tidbits their little nuggets and i like that and i really appreciate that and i enjoy that and um you know, it's always it was always good to to spread the wealth of love and peace and joy and harmony, because um, we all have it. We all have that um, that opportunity to share that. So, a um, little reporting on me. I'm doing a lot better. My health was not too good. I wasn't feeling well. I had this uh, chronic cough. I actually did some took some of my own advice that I you know work with other people about self healing, and all of a sudden. I feel much better. I'm doing better. Uh, I'm going through a transitional period right now in my life. There are some things happening um, on the personal level, you know, so I'm not going to get too much into that. Some of you uh, know me and some of you are aware of things that are going on in my personal life, but uh, I'm, I'm still got to look at things positive. I've got to look forward to things and I know it can be hard and difficult. We're all humans and we're all trying to do our best on this uh, plane of existence in this moment in time. And it's not always going to be easy it's not always going to be simple and it's not always going to be the way we want it but um i'd like to take a moment just to kind of reflect on the last uh you know maybe three weeks or so since we're going into the last week of january and just kind of reflect back on that and just take a moment to think about you know if you're if you've moved in a direction that seems like it's the right place you want to go and the right way you want to be i know for some of us it's it's not always easy to uh to navigate the you know the waters of life and for others you know it seems easier but it's not that it's easy it's just we've learned to and we have been totally been accustomed to doing things a certain way i'm choosing to do things a lot different this year than i have in a long time because i feel that i need that number one 
and um, that'll put me in the right direction where I want to go personally. And um, I'm hopefully you are. And I see Juanita. So you says me too. I totally understand. I get that. And for all of you who, um, you know, who will, are going through stuff, you know, just here to tell you, you know, it, it'll work out. Maybe not according to the time that you want it. Don't be pressured and don't feel bad and don't feel like if you're not getting there, you'll get there. I want to say hi to Karen. I want to say hi to Mark. To all of my friends who pop in and out. And I really appreciate you guys. Um, <clears throat> I really enjoy doing these these podcasts and sharing uh, some things with you. I like to talk about the holistic, the metaphysical, and the alternative uh, ways of health, self-healing. And a lot of us who are here, who are actually listening to the show, you all come from a different background. So you all come from a, a place where you help people in, within that process of helping somebody else. Uh, you help you. You help yourself, which is good. And that's what we want to do. Uh, to empower and to bring some people into the place and to step forward into their own power in order to for them to able to you know think about what they need not necessarily somebody's advice not advice is great and i'm not knocking it but you know at some point you have to make the final decision if that's going to work for you so i i kudos to all those of you who are working hard to do what you need to do um proud of those who i know personally who are doing better and i'm cheering those on who are working to do better so um, anyhow, my goal is to heal individuals, heal the families, heal the communities, heal society, excuse me, and heal the planet. And burping, I'm going. <clears throat> gotta let it out, man. Just gotta let it go. Gotta let it go with the flow. And, um, you know, here we are. Here we are today at 9 p.m. at night, Eastern Time, in my uh, office of temporariness. And, um, you know, and I'm sharing with you guys about the things that happened in my life. And uh, things are good. Things are getting better. But um, today, I wanted to just take a moment for us to relax and take a moment to just got, gather our thoughts and just kind of see where we're at and and feel feel what we need to feel today. Okay. So if you if you listen to something on the show you don't agree with it, that's fine. And if you agree with it, cool. And if you've had enough of listening to me, that's fine too. This is by invitation. I invite you to listen or invite you to you know come back and listen anytime but let's take a, a, a quick deep breath we exhale take another deep breath one more feels pretty good so the topic today that I wanted to talk about, you know, in this hour, less than an hour that we have now is, was about belief system, <clears throat> you know, and how these belief systems come about, how we, we work them and how we get into them and how people, I don't want to say make us do it, but let's examine that. Let's examine, you know, beliefs. Hello, Connie. Good to see you. I'm going to say hi to everybody who pops in, okay? Jeremy, I see you. I mean, I didn't miss you there on purpose. I want to just say hi to everybody who's listening. If I missed you, I apologize. I'm just kind of like, you know, kind of going with the energy and going with the flow. So, and I'm just ready to talk. Matt, how are you? Anyhow, <laughs> that's going to, I think that's going to be the theme today. I'm just going to say hi to everybody who pops in. Bloop, bloop. There you are. Bloop, bloop. Bloop, bloop. There you go. But examining belief systems. And um, belief systems are, oof man you talk about beliefs you know belief systems where do i start where do i begin you know it could be a religious belief it could just be a belief in certain things you know belief that you know this particular amethyst uh you know sphere has some kind of magical powers and you know whenever you touch it you just get more energetic you feel more energized some people believe that so let, let's talk about that. Belief systems, belief systems, belief systems, belief, belief. It's my belief that things are this way. It's my belief that I'm going to see this this way. It's my belief, so you can't really shame me because it's my belief. It's because I believe it. And so it doesn't matter if you believe it. It only matters if I believe it. If I believe it, that's enough. That's the form of belief system. Okay. Beliefs can change, yes. And I'm going to kind of, and this is interactive, so you guys can share with me, and then I'll, I'll talk with you as well. Yeah, and beliefs do change. They change every day, every second. We can change a belief. We can change a belief about something that we hear right now or tomorrow or later. 
that I'm talking about them, maybe the major belief systems, like, for example, uh, Christianity, you know, Hinduism, all these different things that, you know, that people are kind of attracted to. And um, I'm one of those people who kind of question things. And believe it or not, I, I, I do question a lot of the, the metaphysical things in our community. Those of you who truly, really know me and, are, and know the work that I do, I don't just take things firsthand. And sometimes when I don't understand something, I'll be the first person to ask, you know, hey, I don't get it. You know, my, my friend Mark Matheny, who's an astrologer who does uh, things on with Insights Radio, you know, he talks a different language and I have to ask him, so what's that mean? And he explains to me, he's patient enough with me. And I appreciate that because, you know, that's how I will learn. But if I act like I know it and then I really don't know it, then I really don't learn anything. I'm just learning, I'm learning to be, you know, coy and really kind of dumb if I don't ask questions. But so, but Mark goes out of his way to explain to me, you know, what a North node is, what a house is and, and this, this, this planet in this sign, this one in this place. I don't always get it. I, I am not an astrologer by any means, okay? So, but, you know, I have a fancy for the stars, and I get it. But it's important. It's important to understand that, you know, we all speak a different language. We all talk uh, differently. We all sometimes come from a place where we all believe in the same thing. But, like, you know, for example, the, 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 the major religions in the world, okay? And, of course, I'm projecting, okay? So everybody has their belief and everybody believes that that's the way it should be. And that's the way it is. And, you know, and, and I have no qualms if you believe that. But I always have that question, you know, is your, is that belief, is it legit? Is it legitimate? You know, you know, did, did, did this guy walk on water? And, you know, did this guy resurrect? Or did, you know, did this guy actually come out of his mother? He's born. He's just walking, you know, as, is those real? For some people, it's real. I'm not saying it's not real for me, and I'm not here by any means to discount or to put down anybody's belief system. So I want to make that very clear. I'm just talking in general about how beliefs, you know, uh, create, you know, and control and manifest and put us in certain places and certain things and certain ideals and certain, you know, um, comp comp they put us in compartments and then we have to go that way. Beliefs are beautiful, you know, especially religious beliefs. They're very beautiful. I mean, they could be a very magical thing, you know, and every belief, there's a beautiful side and then there's kind of a not so beautiful side. We've all seen that. We've all experienced it. We've all been part of it. And even though men and women try to do their very best in the world with the belief systems that they have and the belief systems they carry, you know, we have to remember where they come from. They come from the people usually before us most of the time unless we actually move into a space into a place where we create our own police system now i'm kind of big and i'm kind of a big promoter of combining a lot of belief systems into one because there's a little piece and little piece over here that just seems to fit with this piece um i don't i'm not full-blown doctrine one way you know there's times that I, you know i was raised full-blown doctrine to, i was raised catholic and you know i was raised to think of things this way and this is how it was and you know Part of it was, um, it was very beautiful and there's very magical things about it, how they would, um, you know, interpret their, how, for example, Christ would talk, for example, and how they would, you know, the saints and everything, all the beautiful things about that. But the amazing thing that I liked about Catholicism, you know, uh, one thing that, that sparked me about it as a kid was, is the, the saints. Okay. And, and I'm, I'm a, I'm a practitioner of, uh, the healing arts you have through shamanism for those of you who are not aware of my practice i do uh and i work through shamanism i'm a facilitator through that so i come from a background of very ancient belief systems something that's very old even before religion you know these were medicine men these were mm -hmm. medicine women these were people who actually were outsiders to their community but they were really respected and to be a medicine person in those you know long ago was very powerful and, and it was a calling and it was something that you you did you you didn't deny it you did not you know that when you were called to do the medicine work you just you had to do it you that was your calling you were born into that today we have more choices than that but back back to back to what i was talking about about the the catholic ways the reason i bring about i talk about the saints i thought it was kind of interesting because there are many you know you to be canonized saint you have to have three miracles and I find that miracles are, we all have miracles <clears throat> within us. So the saints aren't the only ones. It's not exclusive to the saints. 
they who are canonized and the ones who are not canonized because there are a lot of them who are not. But what I, what I find is, is they all had a miracle and the miracle could have been anything. But I'm going to take, for example, one, uh, well, I'm going to talk about one saint here from my country, from Peru, San Martin de Porres. San Martin de Porres was actually a black man. He was a black saint. Well, he wasn't a saint at first, but he was a priest and he was from Peru. He lived there. Uh, one of his miracles was that he brought a mouse, a cat, and a dog to eat, came to eat and at a bowl, and they all shared, okay? His other his other gift was that he had could lay on hands and heal people, okay? So, and the other one was he was actually seen, actually was in Africa. He actually helped people who were in Africa, you know, when they were having their, you know, problems and stuff he would actually be in africa but here's 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 the crazy thing he never left peru he actually uh projected himself to to peru uh from peru to africa to the african countries and the nations he would he would go there but he was his biggest callings was that he could lay hands and you know during the you know those skirmishes and, and little wars and stuff between peru and chile and all these different countries he would actually heal wounded soldiers he would heal heal people that was one of his major gifts. So here we go. You got a guy who can astral project. You have a guy who can actually um, lay a hand. So that's kind of a Reiki. Okay. And then you got a guy who can communicate with animals. So he's an animal communicator. So these are all the things that a lot of you do. A lot of you people who are, are friends of mine here, here on the show or who are listening or who will listen later, who are, who are familiar with that kind of work. I'm familiar with that kind of work. I lay a hands. I communicate with animals. You know, I, I have been told that i've been places where i haven't been so i have documented you know things about that where i've been and by no means am i canonizing myself as a saint because i ain't no saint okay <laughs> but the thing is we all have this gift and you know and christ also said you know you will do greater things than i did okay so you know that's where belief systems come in when we believe that we can do something that we can create the magic within the palms of our hands and, and through the the focus of our mind and through the focus of our body and through our spirit and through our soul you know we can do a lot of amazing things but sometimes we don't believe it and so that's where the belief system comes in so you know i wanted to share that with you there are other saints even during world war ii who have been you know there have been projections during the war where they were going to attack certain cities and stuff where the head of a priest was floating in the air and, and it scared all the you know the allies away from that you know in, in italy so there there's a report if you do your if you do a little head hunting and you check it out and google it a little bit you'll find that um there's been some pretty amazing magical things and i believe that we can do a lot more a lot more than when we when clear our mind and when we clear ourselves to the space where we're able to do it now some of us have uh, different gifts some of us have our special gifts i think that even though just like we are tall short you know wide thin you know fast slower than others i think our gifts come in the same way some of us have the ability to do certain things that others are not or or maybe we just don't have enough you know kick to that to do that for example i'm a short guy i'm five three okay there's certain things I, I can't reach and grab you know I, I just can't i have to get a stool and stand on it and you know i'm vertically challenged but i can jump though i can jump pretty high but <laughs> but the thing is that you know it is how you use your gifts so you can use your gifts by helping and say hey hey my friend could you get that thing off the top shelf for me because i'm a little vertically challenged and you know they're going to say oh yeah sure short friend i'll get that for you you know so and so here you are the gift of communication the gift of gabbing the gift of you know making friends you know there's it's it's all magical and you're all magic we're all magic we all have that ability we all have that in us if we truly want to now the beliefs that we carry in ourselves you know they obviously change yes that was noted earlier by my friend connie that they do change and that's good that they change and you should be changing you should always be examining and re-examining what you fall into how you believe you are and how you think you're moving to that space now beliefs aren't just religious beliefs you know they could be political beliefs they could be anything i mean there's there's a religion the great spaghetti monster i believe that's what it's called 
a religion about spaghetti monster and the meatballs and the spaghetti and it all is if it's done properly through the irs code you know you could be legitimately be a religion but either way you know i wanted to share that, that was kind of funny but uh, yeah beliefs are you know beliefs are all over the place now for me personally you know um i believe that you know that there's reincarnation and a reincarnation you know uh a place where you know christ came back and stuff like you know there's a part of me believes but there's another part that questions that too that's the human side of me i'm not sold on everything okay because that's just the way i am uh i'm i don't have to it's not that i have to see it to believe it it's just i you know sometimes you wonder sometimes you wonder you know when you die is it over is it done is that it i mean most some of us have had that question i've asked that i would be surprised if no one in this in this uh in this group of friends who are here did never ask that question we all wonder sometimes what happens next and i think i've told this story about you know conception before where you all were inside our the womb of our mother and incubating there for nine months and you know that was our existence for nine months we didn't know anything but what we, where we were and how we were living upside down sideways depending how you were in a bag of fluid you know you know being fed through a tube kind of like a science fiction movie if you think about it you know it's kind of interesting and you know whatever your mom ate you ate so it's it's kind of interesting it's kind of neat isn't it to think about it but in here you're in this warm place you're in this warm pretty you know amazing thing and it kind of reminds me of the matrix of so those of you who watched the matrix you remember when uh, keanu reeves was in that that um that tube or whatever and there was like a whole rows of people inside these you know a, a battery like uh system and they were all plugged in the back of the head kind of it's kind of that same way and it's kind of like being in your mom too so imagine all the things that you had taken in you know genetically you know uh nourishment and the sustenance and everything from her when she was sad were you sad you know when she was happy were you happy so it, it's pretty powerful that's why we have a deep connection a lot of us with our mom and a lot of us have issues with moms too because of that deep connection because sometimes moms can be very attached to their children which rightfully so because that's the way it is and men seem to be a little bit removed because you know we're kind of the sperm donor well here you go thanks a lot you know but you know but moms are important and everybody has their role and their role is you know what it is and how we become now we're inside conception now you got enough track here so we're inside our mom and we're being you know made of sorts you know and we're and we're we're growing and we're expanding and then we reach a point where you know we start to get uncomfortable we start to feel you know a little bit cramped you know we start to like okay uh, last week i was fine all of a sudden my 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 foot's in my face i don't know how that happened but it's there and i can't move you know and little by little you know the gifts of nature move us you know into and puts us in the position where we we get ready to to be conceived we're ready to be born okay and so we're in that space and you know just like life we're in that space you know some of us get into that space where we're like oh, i don't know what to do i'm having this, this guy but you know we're there and that's the same way when you're being you're about to be born now you're starting to be pushed down this this deep canal this hole you know you're like some of us get popped up to the c-section version of birth which is just as fine i'm sure they, they always make it sound like it's not as fun but it's not it's not fun for the mom but one of my kids were born c-section he just got it plopped up you know it was like Ploop. and there he was he was like well here i am but, <laughs> but you're going down the canal and you're being squeezed into this place and you you know you have you have you can't see yet you really can't see anything and you're kind of like going oh my god what is going on in your head number one you have that soft spot in your head that's so your skull can collapse upon itself so you can get squeezed through that's why our heads look so deformed and we look like little aliens or like you know our faces because uh that's what happens you know that's how we get down there and then our shoulders get dislocated and we all we're all going like this going oh my god what is going on and then mom's having contractions and the body her body is working to like dispel you like i need you out like right now because you're like hurting me okay 
and you know and the epidural needs to be on right now in my back okay so you know you're going <laughs> you're going through that phase you're going through that through that push and then eventually you come out and you're still you're still not quite you're still not disconnected yet you know and your belief is that everything's okay everything's fine oh it's a little bit colder i it's, i don't know what that is but as soon as you as soon as they cut you i don't know how why it is at least from in my experience with my kids as soon as that you know that cord like this cord they went dad would you like to cut the cord i'm like okay sure and you know you cut it and next thing you know two things happen they go they don't move and then all of a sudden the doctor i don't know what he does and they spank him on the butt they do because don't, don't don't think they don't and you hear this and then all of a sudden you go you have your first experience of true like like physical contact pain like someone smacked your ass like you're like oh what the heck was that you know you're like and all of a sudden you're like you start screaming and then you you start breathing and you're like all of a sudden you're going what is that what is going in my lungs you know you, you take your first breath and then you're going and then everything's brand new and everything's like oh my god all of a sudden you're just like oh my god where am i where the hell? i can't see i don't know but i can smell everything and then next thing you know you know they put you on your mom you feel that heartbeat it's the heartbeat it's mom's heartbeat it's that's why you remember you remember her heartbeat and as soon as you hear that heartbeat your heartbeat lines with her and those two heartbeats become one for that moment and that's why it's so important when they put your mom on you the baby on mom and that's what we hear and that's what comforts us and plus for the warmth of her body but now you're out of that existence and that's what i'm talking about the belief systems okay you're out of that existence you cannot go back i will bet anybody a hundred dollars you cannot go back inside your mom's womb no it does not work can't do it you won't do it i trust me on that one okay and um i tell you but you come out of that belief system in that place where you thought you were okay and everything was fine for nine months now all of a sudden you're not there can't go back now you have to start this whole new life and that's how we're going to move into the next one into the next life into the next realm where we go we're going to move into this thing that we don't even know how we got there we're just going to know we're there we get we don't just because we don't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist okay because when you're inside your mom you didn't see it you didn't know uh, you didn't really you didn't you know there was a whole world outside of you you had no clue i don't care who you are don't tell me you think you knew i know what's out there talking to other baby in the other womb i know what's out there a whole new world oh, baby the baby's like man i just want to get fed and eat okay they have the baby's born you're out can't go back kind of the same way when we leave this existence we move out so i got a belief system for you i got something for you guys to gnaw on and think about and maybe some of you have an answer for me and maybe some of you can kind of figure it out what about reincarnation i don't know some of you believe it how many people believe in reincarnation there's about 11 on you here someone say yes or no and i kind of want to know and i kind of want to see if you agree with me because i have a theory about reincarnation and i want to throw it at you and i want to see what you guys think so let me see how many people believe reincarnation raise your hands real quick i'm popping i'm looking i'm watching okay okay yes i see one yes kind of okay he just joined i do okay okay now do you believe in reincarnation because somebody told you about it or do you believe in reincarnation because you have this innate sense that it does exist because i'm going to propose something here real really interesting okay and it has a lot of ways it can spin okay maybe some of you maybe some of you okay okay and i'm talking about multiple universes here okay so we're not talking about just this universe that we live in so there's multiple universes because there's multiple cleopatras okay i hear a lot of people say well i was cleopatra and then the lady down the street goes i'm cleopatra so you know you have this game show goes well i'm cleopatra so with a real cleopatra stand up in a multiple universe you could every one of you could be cleopatra okay but here's what i want to propose okay and i want you to really think about this because i found it really interesting when i asked this question and no one really gave me a straight answer about it okay all right it's 2000 years ago okay you lived 2000 years ago okay we'll just say during the time of christ okay just to kind of make things a little easier 
right? For some people believe that they've been there and they watched the crucifixion. Now, you were born, or actually you were alive, not just born, and then you had a family. You had a whole bunch of kids, for example, and then you die <clears throat> and you have a legacy of family, unless they all got wiped out in a war or by a famine or whatever. Okay, I'll throw that in right now. That way there's no question about it because that could happen. Your whole line could be destroyed. So somewhere in the timeline of a history, the historical history that we have, okay, if you were reincarnated, your family line is still existing, meaning that wherever you started, like in the last life, that line is possibly still going on. Do you follow what I'm saying? Excuse me. Do you follow what I'm trying to say? So say my last name was Smith and, you know, I was there. I was a Roman soldier. And so all of a sudden, even though I'm living in 2018, okay, in the time of 2018 as a 51-year-old man, somewhere in the timeline of history, there's a whole line of my family who's existing still. Not the Garcia side, okay? I'm talking about the Smith side, the one that I was part of 2,000 years ago. Do you guys believe that to be true? Do you think that that could be a possibility that somewhere through the historical records, through life, you could find yourself? Find a line. Figure it out. Because some of you are pretty clean and pretty clear on how you find your, your ancestors and stuff. When you go back far enough, you can. I always find that fascinating that somewhere in this world right here, in the world that I'm in right now, if I had multiple wives, for example, because... That probably would have happened because that was, that was a common thing, okay? That means there's possibly a whole line of family of mine living today after I had died. You know, they just kept, you know, having children and moving into, you know, wherever they go to and creating, procreating. So that's a belief that I have. That's one of my belief systems that they that's why I call everybody my brother, my sister. That's why it's like all my relations. I find it very powerful and I find that, you know, there's a possibility that the person I'm talking to could be a relative of mine. I mean, literally a relative, like somebody who, uh, you know, I was like, I was like their ancestor. And I, and, I, and I think it would be a cool movie. I think it would be a freaking banana wild and crazy movie to create something like that where, you know, everybody, you know, is just like, yeah, everybody's related to everybody, which is true. We all are all related. We all come from a certain place, but I find that, I find that very interesting. They don't, I don't hear many people talk about that. You know, they always talk about, you know, what they were, what they saw, what they felt and how they have connections with people. But I'm always curious about, you know, it's kind of like when they did the, for those of you who the Gnostic, you know, the readings and the, the parts of the Bible, you know, they talk about Jesus and he had a family and that family line is still existing today. For, for someone, I have friends who are part of that lineage who believe that they are the, the descendants of Jesus Christ. That's why I find that pretty fascinating. Now, if I'm reincarnated, if you're reincarnated, that means that we have a line kind of similar. And would we still be that part of that line? Even though we're in a different different body, a whole different line of people, how did we pop over? How did we jump into this body? You know, there's a lot of theories about that. There's a lot of there's a lot of things that people bring up. You know, I'll sip my tea here real quick. You know, I, I find that kind of interesting. And, you know, belief systems are as powerful as you want to make them. And for me, that's one of those things because I've had I've had, you know, these these dreams of being part of other people's families. Like I've had uh, very elusive dreams about being in a coma and had this whole other family just tending to me and taking care of me. And, and this went on for like a good, I don't know, it was probably a good eight to 10 years. Okay. And this is, you know, it's, it just ended about almost, I don't know, three, four years ago. It just kind of, it just, it stopped because they actually, in that particular belief, in that, in that realm of that dream state, which is also a reality, you know, sometimes we don't know if this is real or that's real. But in that realm, I was I was someone's father. I was somebody's, you know, something, someone's connection. And they would talk to me and I, I would I could see them talking to a version of what I would look like 
I don't remember exactly what I looked like. I just remember being in the bed. I remember them reading to me, talking to me. And and it came to one one point where they had to let me go. Okay, they kept me for so long. And they they pulled the plugs of sorts. They, they disconnected me from a ventilator. I didn't die. They disconnected me from, you know, the food. And that, I think, is what did me in. Not taking any of this. But it was so real. It was so... And they all said goodbye to me. And there was quite a few people. And I remember people crying. And I remember people, you know, just talking to me. Like if I was... I could hear them. I could hear them. And you know... And I kid you not, it was it was real. Sometimes that night, I would go and I want to lay down and just have that dream because I I knew these people. You know, I've created this this family with these people. And then I never had that dream ever again. I've never when I, when they let cut me loose, when they let go of me, in that dream state or in that world or in that other existence, that ended. I have visions and memories of that, of that existence, of what happened to me. And I finally, I finally, um, it ended. It finally ended for me. Now that belief, it, some could say it was just a piece and part of me, you know, working through the struggles of my life. Another part of me could say, hey, you know, that was real. I have to report to me personally in my, in my head. In my mind that that was real because it was so vivid it was so clear like as if i was talking to you right now and you know sitting here like i am right now that's how it was and it was so profound and i've written a journal about that for many years you know about what was going on and i tell you maybe it was a past life thing i don't know maybe it was something that happened to me and i just remembered but it came back in a dream and, you know, those people were real. And those people loved me. And then I woke up and I was in tears. I, I'll never forget this. This will always be in my, my mind. But I woke up and there I was. I, I was back. And then, you know, it was almost like a sense of relief. It was a sense of, it was completion there. And then I didn't have to go back there anymore. Even if I was holding space for somebody temporarily, you know, it, but it ended. But then I'm here in this world and, I'm, you know, and I live a whole different existence. You know, here I, I, I do podcasts. I, I have, you know, my holistic practice. practice. I, I drum. I do my drummings. I do my uh, one minute changes, Iggy, the mind of Iggy, my, my Nachito Panda and Farmer Finger and all these different things, all these different characters that I have. So I have all this whole other life here, this whole other thing that I do here. And, um, but it's, it's, it's based on what I believe in the things that I believe in, but it's very magical. It was very magical. So think about your belief systems, you know, think about, you know, when you have your belief systems, do you, do you share them? Do you, um, do you just keep it to yourself? You know, some people aren't big about, and that's not necessarily sharing. Some people don't like to be shared too. They don't like people projecting onto them belief systems you have. Oh no, it's this way, it's that way, blah, blah, blah. You know, no, Jesus, Jesus, you know, no, Allah, Allah, you know, whatever, you know, a Buddha, Buddha, you know. There are people like that, and you're going to find those people. That's normal. It's going to happen. I can't tell you which one's right or wrong. I can only tell you what's right for you. But I know one thing question everything. I don't care what it is, question everything. And I'm not saying question in a way of being, you know, uh, narcissistic or rude or or jerk about it just ask questions ask legitimate questions you know until you know you feel you know there's people who i know who are christians who still question that's good you should question you should ask because everything's in it's about interpretation we have to it's it's supposedly the word of of a of a, of a reincarnated deity someone who came back resurrected deity you know and um but some people take it very to heart and they have the right to and they have every right to feel I think what happens is sometimes we may take it too far. We take it to too extreme and that happens and that's normal. But our belief systems are the things that, you know, help us get through. Now we have magical people in this world. We have all kinds of healers in this world. You know, we have 
all kinds of things. Some of you read some of some people, some of the people, Louise Hay, you know, Dwayne Dwyer. They're all they're all dead now, but they all made an impact in life. They all came with their belief systems about the world. They came and they shared. They came and they gave. Even Albert Einstein had his belief systems about, you know, science and how the universe works. And for some people, science is, is their belief and they believe nothing but that. You know, science still can't explain why the universe is still expanding. I can. But anyhow, the science has, you know, a hard time. The universe should be contracting, coming back, but it's not. It keeps growing and it will keep growing. You know, we're not limited to these bodies. You know, our bodies are just you know a housing is a temple that we have to take care of while we're here and when we're this body no longer can serve us it's it's order it's we're here to prepare for the next in, incarnation the next existence because energy can't be destroyed and the science has proven that energy we are energy inside of us you know 21 ounces i think that's what they say disappears out of our body when we die is that how how heavy the you know or is it 21 grams i forget i think it's 21 grams but anyhow that we weigh less when we die it's kind of crazy you know for a short time until we blow it and get big and whatever but yeah but you know we inside of us is is a mechanism that we cannot necessarily see but it moves us and it works us and it puts us in a direction that we need to go and i find it find it very fascinating that our spirit and our soul and how it all works together how all that is you know manifesting in in and simultaneously working could you imagine if you had to think about every little thing about your body inside your body right here everything every little blood blood cell everything that moves every little hair that growing you know your body's telling it to grow you know every you know fluid that moves through your system every gas that's through through you have more bacteria in your body than you have cells you know when i heard that i couldn't believe that that's how i'm how powerful of, of, of a world we are we are, we're a, a very powerful being you know to house such amazing things in ourselves just in our core in our in our system you know we have white blood cells red blood cells we you know we have all these things that move through us all these things that are inside of us it just it's, it, it's just there's a whole temple there's a whole world in us you're a whole world so it when you think you're insignificant and you think you're not enough Think about all the things that ha depend on you to survive. You know, not just the people externally outside of you. Your body, you know, it is dependent on how you take care of it and how you love it. And, you know, for some of us, we do a good job. And for some of us, we don't. But we at least attempt to do better. But it's fascinating. It's interesting. It's really interesting to know that you are a world. You are a planet. You are an existence you have a core that's hot you know and you stay warm you know if you drop between too high or too low things happen to you it's kind of like the earth if it gets too hot things happen if it gets too cold things happen you know she's alive she's a living being she's a living part of us we're part of her you know no matter what belief we come from no matter what we believe we're all from this dirt you know, unless you're an alien from outer space, came from some other planet. Some of you may be telling me that you are. I'm looking. Nobody said anything. Okay. Shh. Anyhow, <laughs> but we're from this earth. Most of us are from this earth. And, you know, the atmosphere that we have around us, you know, that force field, that shield protects us. So we don't really disappear. We don't go away. You know, the water gets recycled. You know, the air gets recycled. All that stuff just moves through this, this, this ball and, you know, it gets brought back. You know, the water you're drinking, you know, this tea that I'm drinking, that water's probably been filtered and, and brought and came from God knows where. And it's probably some dinosaur urine in here, but we'll put a little bit of tea bag in it and make it taste better and a little honey. That works. <laughs> but anyhow, you know, it could just, it could be anything. Water has been trapped in rocks forever. But, you know... The, the thing about beliefs is, you know, they're, they're yours. They're unique as you are, as the snowflake that falls. Everybody says, we're just unique as the snowflake that falls from the sky. <clears throat> yeah, we're all unique as a snowflake that falls from the sky, but we're still a snowflake and we still impact how we touch the earth and how and what we do and where, where we go. We're just like that drop in the ocean. 
we contribute to the ocean, even though we're a drop, but we're part of the ocean at the same time. We're part of that, that grand scheme of creating and moving and manifesting that consciousness. The water holds consciousness. This whole planet holds consciousness. You know, we can create the weather. We can create, you know, what happens, you know, we can create snow. We can create a sunny day. We can create a rainy day. If the trees can do it, we can do it. The trees manifest. Cornfields manifest. Okay. You ever been out to a cornfield? They manifest the change in weather. People don't know that. Do research. Check it out. Check it out. But trees also manifest and create and they move the atmosphere. They change things. They have gift. They have magic. You know, a lot of people are concerned because of the forest fires and everything that happened in, in California. Yeah, terrible for humans. But some plants and some trees, you know, conifer trees, they require their pods, you know, which are their, what is it doing? I can't think, but their seed is inside that in that cone, you know, and it that needs fire to release it and to germinate that cone. That's when lightning storms hit, you know, out in, in the woods, in, out in the forest. That's in, you know, that's part of nature. We accelerated it, yeah, by burning everything down. Not cool, but it happens. But that's that's not the natural selection of stuff too, you know. Man also thinks he's better and smarter than than life and better than mother. And then he screws it up, but she calibrates it. She fixes it. She'll put it back in order for herself, not for you necessarily. Okay, so her belief is she'll take care of herself before she takes care of you. She'll give you the things you need. She has everything on the planet that you need. But Mother Earth will always calibrate herself to her needs first. We have to adapt to Mother Earth regardless. It doesn't matter. I don't care what happens. You know, she'll take and she'll create a whole new thing. We screw it up. And she'll take it and she'll take that clay and she'll form it and she'll move it. And she'll create in her belief system what needs to come from that. And that may mean that we don't exist anymore. Maybe giant squids will now rule the world. But either way, you know, we, it's about our survival, our belief of being surviving. That's what we strive to do. That's where we try to move to. I don't worry about the earth as much as I worry about my brothers and sisters on the earth and how they're affected, you know, and impacted by what happens on the earth because of what we do to the earth. There's a huge difference. You know, we talk about warm, warm, uh, global warming, global cooling. Those are realities. And those are beliefs for some people. And those beliefs are, you know, inherent beliefs for some people. They, they'll fight to the death for it. I've seen, I've seen people lock themselves up in trees. I've met people who've done that and they believe wholeheartedly if they don't do it, no one will. And that's probably true. But what I do know this is the earth will always, 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 because it's part of shamanism. The, the earth will always, always, always recoup itself. You know, when the huge asteroid hit the earth and wiped out the dinosaurs for a long time, there was soot and all kinds of stuff and, you know, nuclear explosion of sorts, you know, when it hit the earth. It wiped everything out. But Mother Earth found a way to recalibrate that. When the Ice Age came, and it lasted forever, and, you know, there was two miles of ice compacting on, you know, the onto the ground and creating glaciers and stuff. You're two miles. Think about that. That's pretty high of ice up, okay, in Ohio, where I live, where I'm from, pushing down. That makes changes. But that's Earth. And, you know, I'm here to tell you that will come back. That's 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 the cycles of this planet. She does that when things get out of balance. She knows how to rebalance and recalibrate herself. And she will do it. Even if we're in the way, we'll have to either go underground, adjust, learn, or figure out a way to live and survive with her. And that's my belief about Mother Earth, that she has her own consciousness, that she knows what's best for her. We pollute her, we we rip her, we we strip her, but you know what? We're only we're doing that to ourselves when we take advantage of her when we don't use her properly. Because you know what? She she will take revenge, and revenge is strong winds, earthquakes, floods, the things that she does. If you don't think she's alive, you know, and those of you you know who, especially some politicians, don't believe that the Earth is alive, they have something coming for them. 
because she doesn't discriminate. She does not discriminate. She will never discriminate. She will wipe you out. It doesn't matter what color your skin is, how much money you got in your pocket. It don't matter. She will wipe you clean. And, you know, historically, we've seen it. And we'll see it again and again and again and again. And the same way with your beliefs. No matter what you believe, things change. You hold on to things you believe, but at some point you have to let go of them too and move into a space where you, you're doing better. Now, do you guys have any questions for me about, you know, <clears throat> the belief systems or stuff? Because I'm, I'm willing to share and I'll pop in there real quick while you're looking. I'm going to pull some cards out. I'm going to pull out three cards here, okay, for us tonight. Well, we have a little bit of time left on the, on the clock. And these are my uh, Power Animal Oracle cards. And I love these cards. My other cards I like are my uh, my Native American Oracle cards too. My friend Adriana got me. And I'm going to pull out three. <clears throat> and we'll see when I go. See if we get something different. I always seem to draw the same cards for some reason. And I shuffle them really good. Okay, there's one. There's two, and there's three, and we'll see where we're going to go. I'm going to see what's going on. What is going on? Okay. The first card I pulled is the Raven. It's about magic, own your own power, okay? For those of you who are watching here, the Raven. Raven's a mimicking bird. It does, it mimics, it does, it talks. It's one of the first birds. And, um, you know, it's just a reminder, okay, to just be ourselves, that we are magical, that we have the gift, we have power, we have the things to share with the world, and we can do whatever we want when we are in the right frame of mind. We, it's not to our advantage to hurt other people because we will we'll feel the cause and effect of that. That will come back and bite us in the butt. The other one is the otter. Okay, see the otter. The otter is about surrendering and letting go of control. The otter is here to remind you to play. Have fun. Be playful. Get in the water and swim. Enjoy and have a good time. Get wet from time to time. You know, just play. Otter is a good card because, it, you know, if you know anything about the otter, when it's swimming, it's very, it can do a lot of acrobatic, all kinds of stuff in the water. Outside the water, it's not, it's a little bit clumsy. It's not as fat. You know, it's not as lucid as it would be in the water. So this is about playing, okay? And the raven's about being in your magic and then the last card is <clears throat> the wolf okay the wolf is the guardian you are safe and protected at all times higher self we can uh, we can create barriers for ourselves we can pray we can hear make incantations for protection keep you know negative energy or whatever negative people away from us but the wolf's a guardian and the wolf is a protector and the wolf is actually one of those amazing creatures and some of you probably have read stories about where wolves were extinct in certain areas they took the wolves you know out and then the whole population the whole area got screwed up the ecology got screwed up but then they put the wolves back and then the wolves went back there and they actually they they through the help of mother nature they recalibrated the area brought back grass brought back for you know, the foliage brought back you know, things because what happened is now they're the predators and the predators what would what would happen is the animals would eat all the vegetation they would eat you know things and they wouldn't they didn't have any control there was no checks and balances from nature that's why mother nature creates things and does things so those are your animals for today your wolf your raven and your otter card and those are pretty powerful cards if you guys want a personal reading for me just reach me at iggygarcia.com uh, you can set up an appointment with me there, and uh, you can see all the services that I do. And um, Drum Circle here at um, Reiki, uh, at the Reiki Center, 7 p.m. Saturday, so join us there. We'll be there for those of you who want to go to the Drum Circle. And um, I'm just out about time, guys, and I want to thank you for tuning in and being here. Um, always grateful, always a great time. I hope you enjoyed my show. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. And um, I'll be back on more regularly. And if you have any questions that you want to um, 
you know you know talk about in the future let me know uh irisikwi irisikwi means gratitude in quechua okay ho'oponopono okay much love peace and love to you all i love you guys thank you very much Bonita. thank you for always tuning in we like always there and i appreciate that and sharon thanks for tuning in and you guys have a good evening be well okay.